I'm Liana. Um, I'm the co-founder and product designer of Memo.ai. Um, we're a note-taking app for technical teams that use Slack. So you can basically use Memo to save and find just any work notes that you have. So for example, meeting notes, or lists of links, or work ideas, or even code snippets if you want. Cool, that sounds amazing. Um, how did you end up in the world of bots? Did, you, did Memo start off as a bot? Like, how did you end up here? Yeah, so we got super interested in bots. Um, there was a huge wave of uh, bot builders <laughs> um, at the beginning of 2016. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually started off as bot only. So we built um, our previous product, Pogo, on top of Slack. Um, and we were only in Slack. We didn't have any outside uh, uh, website or dashboard or anything. Um, but we qu quickly realized that just the conversational UI is not enough. So that's how we moved into, um, into, the, like, into the web as well. Interesting. So, so did you le were those learnings in Pogo? And then also, I guess, so Pogo was bot only or Pogo? Yeah. So Pogo was initially bot only. Okay. Um, it was a conversational interface. So we used um, NLP and we tried to make the, com the conversations as human as possible. Right. Um, but um, after talking to our users and trying to understand the usability of the interactions, we realized that it wasn't very usable. And we had to put a lot of technical effort into making the conversations more usable right. until we finally realized that the technology just isn't there yet. Like NLP, the, sta the stage of the NLP is not um, advanced enough to understand all of the conversations that people can have Interesting. Um, with our bot. Yeah, because you, Pogo was pretty early in the bot space, even before buttons were available. Yeah, I mean, um, we started working on Pogo before Slack launched their platform. Yeah. Um, so we were one of the few companies that launched with the Slack platform at the same time. Um, yeah. yeah. Are there any features in the conversational platform that you, you wish were there? Um, you know, that you're finding that your users are, are would find useful. What do you mean by conversational? Uh, like in in Slack or anything? Is there anything that you wish existed? Or I don't. If yeah, no, yeah. That's fine too. yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, um, I think um, just having as much flexibility as possible in the um, just combining conversation with graphical elements is mm -hmm. super super important. Right. So every small uh, graphical element that Slack added along the way like buttons or message menus now yeah. proved to improve our usability a lot. Um, like just having the, the option to click a button instead of saying go back, right. uh, like typing it. Um, that flexibility is very, very good for a user. Cool. I mean, we always think that um, our type like uh, our type of um, uh, user will like to type and just to use command lines and stuff. Yeah. But even engineers, like even technical teams, sometimes they just like to click stuff. And right. they're very used to it as well. So it's good to combine both graphical and conversational elements. So for the future, like what do you, how do you feel about conversational interfaces? Um, are we, are we far off? Is it, are you still kind of excited and I guess believe in them in the future or, or not? Yeah. So the way I think about um, conversation is a combination of um, talking and typing and pressing stuff. Um, so just bringing everything together, I think, will be the future. So one thing that I thought about a while ago, like I have an Alexa at home. Mm -hmm. um, and every single time, I find it super hard to order something from Alexa. So if I could just say, Alexa, order some, uh, I don't know, some milk, and then she would show me some options, I could click on the one I want. That experience of seeing and speaking and uh, tapping or clicking on something, I think would make for a magic experience. Um, so just combining everything, I think that's where the future is. Awesome. That's cool. really cool. Um, and then just one last question. Um, Thinking back, maybe like to, to like when you were younger, perhaps, or something, like was there a, a moment that you can remember that you first got excited about technology in general? Just not, not bots necessarily, but mm -hmm. maybe web or something, device or mobile or something yeah. like when you were growing up. Yeah, so I grew up in Romania. Mm -hmm. um, and the first time that I got an iPhone, um, I installed WhatsApp on it. And I remember, like I had a friend in the US. Um, that had visited Romania and we just randomly met. 
and I installed WhatsApp and I, I texted uh, him and he was uh, like somewhere in Arizona and I texted him and I was like, whoa, this is, this is amazing. Like I, I can just speak with someone on my phone <laughs> uh, and just text them and they reply back instantly. Uh, that's just like magic. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for your time, Anna. Yeah, thanks, Dennis. Cool.